guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is karina isaac and uh, excuse my voice i'm having a little flu but uh, i hope you still understand the message i'm trying to pass on on this video so i'm going to give you a story that is so personal to me that only me and another just one person <laughs> know about it because that's personal to me and um, it was out of experience and I hope that there is a lesson that somebody learns after listening to this video. Just like every story starts, mine started with I met this guy and we exchanged numbers and we start chatting and getting to know each other, we get comfortable with each other and um, eventually we got in a relationship but we had never done anything physical because uh, this guy lives in a different city and yeah, in a different city. We live in two different cities. So there was this time I happened to go to the city that he lives in and we planned to meet him. Just like <laughs> you would definitely mean to your person when you go to visit their city. So and then we kind of went out, we are having really good time and now that we're getting to know each other even in person, it makes things more comfortable and easier because you get to know this person. You're looking at how they react when they're talking. Okay, there's a whole bunch about things that happen when you're getting to know each other and meeting person and you feel all these butterflies in your stomach. So the night went so perfectly well that we ended up uh, getting very drunk and uh, we went to a hotel room. So things are happening, emotions are all over, you feel all these things about this person. So we go to bed uh, and uh, things happen. Why am I even calling them things? So, <laughs> so we start doing all the adult stuff and let me make it clear, everybody was drunk but it doesn't mean that we did things because we were drunk. It's not like we were not thinking. Of course, there's always that sense in you that is left. At least even if it's a little bit. There's always that sense in you. So it was nothing that was forced. So we get everything is going down at this point. And um, I take out a condom and then I give the guy and he's like, are you safe? And then I'm like, yeah i know i'm safe and i'm like are you safe and he's like yeah i know i'm safe and then i don't know there's something about emotions and that make you a little bit crazy i think this is just some sense of you that you lose and at some point you're not thinking about the consequences that you're going to follow after that for every action that you do that always be a consequence but at some time we just tend to lose it and we don't get it again we're just so human and so imperfect that okay imperfect but a perfect human because humans do mistakes all the time but this point i don't understand why we get to lose senses like that so talk about senses i lost my senses and we go down and we have having eat a row I don't regret the experience though. But what followed after? So it just after everything happens, we take a shower and then you just sleeping and then things start hitting you like boom, boom, boom. What you, what you, what you? And then I'm asking myself all the uh, myself all these questions like, what of this guy? Line. and then at this point I'm like he could be whatever okay let me say when it comes to sex it's not just about getting pregnant it could also be other infections you don't have to go all the way to extreme at it to AIDS you can get whatever city gonorrhea and all these other things that come with having sex with unprotected sex with somebody the very many stupid decisions that young people do without thinking about the consequences. Sometimes it's good that we think about the consequences. You better be called an evil, uh, paranoid, or something like that. But at least you don't have to go through whatever the situation I went through. Because afterwards, I came back to my city like the next day. With all these questions, I didn't even ask the guy who asked to take a HIV test. So I came back my city and then I come with this whole 
worry i feel like there's water in my tummy i'm thinking about it all the time i can't even concentrate in anything because i'm thinking what if this guy was sick and he just decided to just have a good time with me and i uh, just maybe you know i'm just men can be Mm -hmm. So, I decided I'm going to take a HIV test on my own because my thing, my heart, the kind of person that I am, I was like, it was, it was going to turn out that I'm not safe. I was going to tell this guy, but I'm thinking of the same way. This guy do the same thing for me. Would he do the same thing for me? Would he tell me if he was not like sure about his status to save me from my life? And I'm like, Probably not. It's super different, but the kind of person I am. So I took a step. I went, got a kid, and then I called one of my greatest friends of all time because he helped me down that time when I was taking that test. You know, like the one that you do at home and not swipe, and then you put it there. And I had to wait. It was it like five minutes of hell? I went to the washroom like the rice, and nothing is coming out. But I just went any pee for those five minutes i felt like i prayed twice i went to the, sh the washroom thrice i couldn't eat because i lost my appetite and i'm thinking like god if these things comes out okay i'll never do anything stupid again i will not ever sleep with a man again you don't even want to imagine the kind of things I promised God that day. So, five minutes later, we read the test and it turns out I was HIV negative. So, I texted this guy and I was like, so, I took a photo of the test and I took it and I sent it to him. And he was like, oh, thank you. I mean, okay. And I was like, are you going to send me your test? Can you take it? And I was like, yeah, but I'm very sure I'm okay. I'm not talking about do not ever get the assurance of words my people please don't trust the assurance of words because some people can lie you could be the unlucky person who get the person who knows that they're not safe and then they just want to mess your life because maybe somebody messed their life so don't listen to words take actions and uh, get to know it so but fortunately for me things went out well he, we later took tests together and everything, everybody was safe. And like three months later, I still went and took another test and I was okay. And yeah, and I'm still okay until now because I've not done anything stupid like that again. But here's the thing, people. And so after I took my test, I asked this guy to take his own test and send it to me, but he took forever to send it. But it was like 72 hours, almost 72 hours, after we had done this whatever we did and uh, he had not sent me the test so how was i going to be sure that i was safe so what i did is i went to a public hospital and got those uh tablets that you're given post exposure pills and uh, because seven it was yet yeah, 72 hours and i started taking them so i'm given like um three pills and uh, they tell me to come back the next day to the clinic because i went at night so I took the pills and then I swallowed one and then I, I can't remember it was okay I, but there were three pills and then the next day I went to to the clinic so I go to the BCT clinic at uh, a hospital and then I'm talking to this lady and she's looking at me like you know you're very young you look like somebody who knows what they want in life but you just want to put yourself through shit and you're going to mess your life and then she's asking me what happened tell me the story and then i'm like i'm not going to tell you the story that okay definitely in my mind i'm like i'm not going to tell you the real story because i don't want you to judge me so i told this lady i was having sex and the, and the condom burst because i didn't want to look down because she had already placed my bar like all over here i was not going to bring it down and tell her i had them protected sex so i told her i was having sex and the condom burst and she's like you know what they're talking to me i know that you're lying because nobody wants to tell the truth and then she shows me a whole book so there's the whole pages of the book like this so she shows me that the date that date that day and then it has i think it has like um 
40 spaces i'm out 41 spaces so this page was full and she was going to write my name on the other page and she was telling me like you see all these people came today and then they have told me the same damn story at him I, I hate them protected sex, I think the condom bars, I don't know, I kissed a stranger, maybe it was rape. And then she's like, I know not everybody here is telling the truth, but the rate at which youths these days are, are coming to get these post exposure pills, it's scaring her. Because people are not educated about the consequences of taking those drugs when you're not like having the HIV virus. People just think like, I'm just going to have sex and I'm going to get the peps and I'm going to be okay in my life, it'd be fine. But people are not educated. You guys Google and see the disadvantages of taking these pills when you're not fighting the HIV itself. She actually told me these things can affect your kidneys or even your liver or something. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I get it, I didn't think about it, but in any case, whatever I'm looking at right now, the picture I have right now is like a year from now, I just want to be okay, I don't want to have to worry about anything. Friends I had for uh, those, was it two days or three days that I took those pills? So you take one in the morning, you take another one in the afternoon and later and later in the evening and I had like very nauseous mornings, very nauseous days. I couldn't stop. Okay, everywhere I go I have to chew a gum. I have to take I have to take some juice because my mouth is always like uh, it was one of the worst experiences I had in terms of you feel everything is out of place. Your stomach your appetite you're nauseous all the time it's not easy guys it's not easy you'd rather prevent everything by taking caution stop do stop just stop it when you're about to do it think about it again think about it because somebody out there might be unlucky not like me i was lucky we were both safe but you might be unlucky and meet, meet that douchebag who is not who is going to tell you he's safe and he's not and then like three months or some few months later every you feel like your world is coming down okay it's not the end of the world but that point when you think about it you see my world is ending and my life is over actually i remember taking my hit first that was my first time taking a hiv test and then i remember telling myself like if it turns out positive i'm not going to take those ARPs. i'm just going to wait and die and then i'm like my father always told me about whether you're more bother which means that is in Kiko. He was telling me, okay, so I come from a different county and brought up in a different county. So Mombasa and everybody has the perception of Mombasa is where everything dirty goes down. And he was like, you go to Mombasa, but please don't come here so sickly that we have to take you out in the sun and take you back in the house later during the evening. It's not funny. You don't go through that experience. I'm sorry. Please, guys, take care. The world is cruel, and not everybody will be willing to take care of you if you don't take care of yourself. It's always starts with you. And I think the best thing that I did that time, I wish I knew earlier, and I wish that if you, if you don't know, now you know. Take a chubby test. It makes you understand yourself so that you can make better decisions for yourself so if you're not taking one please do because it will be the beginning of you making wise very wise decisions about your life and you're not going to regret it trust you me every time before you do anything stupid you're going to think about it all the time because it's like you've been given another chance to live